channel and to a new video. I hope you are all doing really well this week. I'm roasting. <laughs> what was I thinking talking about autumn in last week's video? Hmm? What was I thinking? Here we are basking in 30 degree heat. What a glorious week of weather we are having. How blessed and a little bit late coming, but it would appear we've got a bit of summer in September. That's fine. I don't care when it is. We've got it. It's beautiful. Washing on the line. It's, it's just glorious. Everything about it is glorious. I'm loving it. It's getting me in the holiday mood. I'm climatising with the heat. Got to get used to this lovely weather because, fingers crossed, a couple of weeks' time I shall be on my holidays in a very warm, sunny climate and I'm really looking forward to that. So, in preparation of that, I've been shopping this week to Birmingham's Bullring Shopping Centre. So I've got some bits and pieces to show you from there, particularly some items I bought actually in Birmingham's Grand Central shopping area, which Grand Central is part of what used to be the old New Street train station. And it's great for shopping, absolutely great. I had a sneaky peek look around Selfridges, which was lovely. I did not buy anything in Selfridges. I'd need to take out another mortgage. But it was beautiful to have a look around and there's some gorgeous things, absolutely loved it. But particularly, I bought some holiday essentials. So I'm going to show you what I've done there. And generally, hopefully, in this video, show you all things good. So let's get into this week's video. I hope you enjoy it. These are. I absolutely love this shop. You don't see all these H&M home bits and pieces in all the regular shops. This is just a H&M home and it's gorgeous. There's so many lovely things. I love this table display. Absolutely love it. It still looks quite summery, but there is some little autumnal flowers and colours there. Really lovely. <laughs> So honestly, I've come here today to buy things for my holiday, but I'm also here with Paul and he needs a new suit. So I'm just going to have a little browse about while he's looking in shops for him and then we need to go and get our holiday stuff and I specifically want to go into Selfridges. <laughs> displays. Well, needless to say, I can't afford anything from Selfridges and I didn't make any purchases, but so nice to window browse. Lovely, lovely shops. Absolutely gorgeous. Not many people in them, but there were some beautiful displays and some gorgeous items.
UK, I found my favourite shop, The White Company. You know how I love The White Company. Again, I haven't made any purchases today. I'm going to save myself for a little bit nearer Christmas. And actually, I always get some really good bargains in The White Company's January sale. I tend to buy all my Christmas bits in January from The White Company and they do do some really good offers but I couldn't resist a look around it always smells so lovely in here and it looks gorgeous I absolutely love it I didn't buy anything in Selfridges. It was lovely to have a look around, go somewhere different for the day. I haven't been to Birmingham or the Boring or Grand Central Station shopping area, any of, anywhere in Birmingham actually, probably for years. It's been a long time since I've been to Birmingham. So I had a good little mooch about. It wasn't as busy as I thought it would be, especially for a Sunday, but maybe that's a sign of the way things are at the moment, certainly not very many people in Selfridges. Um, so it was pretty pleasant to walk around actually, but the one thing I did notice on the streets in Birmingham, like your main streets, like there's New Street, Corporation Street, Bull Street, all the famous streets, there was a hell of a lot of homeless people and a lot of people who are clearly suffering with addictions and I know that that is nationwide and you're going to see it wherever you go, probably any town, any city. But I suppose living in a village as well and not going to those bigger places as often, I don't see it with my own eyes. And I think sometimes when you see it with your own eyes, it kind of has more of an impact than when you see it on the telly or you know about it, but you're not seeing it on a daily basis. And it really took me by surprise because I worked in Birmingham city centre um, for some years, but I was very young. I was about 20, um, up until about my mid twenties. And it was never like that. Not that I can recall, never ever like that. So that was pretty sad. And it made the streets look um, sort of, well, a lot has changed, obviously, since COVID, it would appear. There were a lot of shops that are no longer there, not just because they're shops from years ago that are just no longer there, but there was a lot closed and a lot of places that look very run down and it looked very scraggy. It didn't look particularly dirty, but it just looked run down, tired, scraggy and a little bit depressing. But the posh shopping places, the malls, you know, like the ball ring and and uh, Grand Central are all sort of thriving, it would seem. But um, yeah, I wouldn't rush to go back, actually. It was good to see it. It was good to go into Birmingham. And of course, it's my hometown, really. But I didn't come away feeling that I'd missed anything. In fact, I came away thinking, hasn't a lot changed? And I suppose that's the case everywhere. Anyway, I picked up holiday essentials. So I'll show you what I've got. Um, I'm not going to do a pack with me kind of video for this up and coming holiday I'm going on because I did that back in June when I went to Menorca. So I will link my video in the description box down below that was just before I went to Menorca on holiday, which is my pack with me video, which shows you some tips and tricks for packing, how to pack light, how to pack organised and how to make your suitcase and your clothing smell lovely the whole time that you're on holiday so if you're interested have a look at that but I will show you the holidays holiday essentials that I did pick up so naturally I picked up some suntan lotion and some after sun as well I always use Nivea I've always used Nivea sun creams and suntan lotions I really like these because they are a spray mechanism so it comes out as a cream, if you like, but I think being a spray mechanism, you can sort of judge how much you're putting on a little bit more than if it's a bottle and you're just pouring out great big loads of sun cream. And I hate 
the washing off of sun cream at the end of the day and trying to get it out of your swimsuit and everywhere else. Um, so I like the spray mechanism because you have a little bit more control of where it's going and what have you. And if you feel like you're burning in one area, like I often burn here on my chest. So throughout the day, I might just spray a little bit more there without having to use loads in a great big dollop on my hand if it is a sort of cream that you pour out. So I do like the spray ones. This is only a factor 15. I've already got plenty of factor 30. So this will be... I tend to always wear factor 30 on holiday, certainly for the first few days while my skin is climatizing to great heat. Um, and if it's incredibly hot, I will stick to factor 30. But as I top up throughout the day, I tend to put 15 on top. So that's why I've picked up a 15 because I've already got plenty of 30. And the after sun moisture is really good from Nivea. It cools as well as soothes the skin and it's got a 48 hour moisture on it. Um, you don't need it for 48 hours, obviously, but it's really, really nice. And it's got organic aloe vera. And if you do get a little bit burnt, and please try not to, but it's got an instant soothe to it. You feel it very, very cool and very nourishing and moisturizing for the skin. And obviously our skin gets dehydrated in the sun as well. So the moisture is really important as well as the cooling effect. And I cannot, recommend that highly enough i've used it for years absolutely love it and you can't find it actually in many places i do struggle with that but i do know that b m are doing it at the moment and they're doing the nivea sun lotions and they're actually on offer at the moment because i suppose obviously it's coming to the end of the season here isn't it so got those but those have got all this i got in the ball ring most of which is from boots actually um or was all of it from boots all of it was from boots yes so I also picked up some large cotton wool pads. I do take cotton wool on holiday because I don't wear any makeup in the day, but I do in the evening. And I'm religious at taking my makeup off before I go to bed, even if I'm on holiday and I'm having a nice time and I might have had a little gin and tonic in the evening. Still stick to my routine. Always take my makeup off before I go to bed. So I needed some cotton wool. I got some Dove deeply nourishing body wash. I what it was called then. <laughs> body wash, shower gel, body wash really. Again, I stick to things that are very moisturising when I'm on holiday to keep my skin in as best condition as possible without going sunburnt or wrinkly or dehydrated. So Dove is my go-to and it smells lovely as well, especially in the evening. Um, I got a little hairspray. Don't use much hairspray and I don't use it in the day at all but I do a little bit in the evening. So I needed a little one and I went for the Tresemme hairspray in extra hold. That's again, one of my go-to favorites. Sorry about that, I just got interrupted by the postman. It was nothing exciting either. Uh, the next thing I picked up was by Garnier. I got some Macella cleansing water that has all in one action. This is the cleansing water I use daily, every day of the year for taking my makeup off, I love it takes all your eye makeup off as well. And I am a contact lens wearer and I have very sensitive eyes indeed. And this is the only thing I can use to get all my makeup off, skin, eyes, everywhere on my face, that doesn't irritate me at all. And it really does pull all the makeup off completely. It's brilliant. Can't recommend this highly enough. Um, you don't need to double cleanse with this. You can just remove all your makeup with this and then put your nighttime moisturiser on, but I am a double cleanser. I've always been a double cleanser. So even though I use this, I do always then wash my face as well and tone and moisturise. But I only need a little one for holiday because I don't wear any makeup in the day, um, only in the evening. So I need a little bit just to take my makeup off again before I go to bed. I got a very little Listerine mouthwash. Again, don't need a big one, it's only for me. And uh, I brush my teeth twice a day, sometimes more, but um, I always finish off with mouthwash, debatable. Some people don't think it's very good for you. It's just my routines, what I've always done. So I bought a little mouthwash. I bought some toothpaste. Um, I bought one for home and one for holiday. I got Oral-B 3D White Advanced Lux Perfection. And that is 24 hour stain prevention. And that is quite a small tube. So that's probably the one I'm gonna take on holiday. But I also picked up some Oral-B Pro Expert in a mega pack. That's for home. That's my go-to generally, that and Colgate. I switch between, I do switch my toothpastes. I don't know why really. 
suppose it's just when you fancy something different or what's on offer, quite frankly. But Oral-B is one that my dentist always recommends to me. So when this is on offer, I do go for that one. So we're stocked up on those, which is brilliant. Um, hair care while I'm away. Now my hair is very thick. It's not in, well I say it's not in good, it is in quite good condition at the moment, but I'll mention that word again this week. I am going through the menopause. So my hair is definitely changing. It is coming out quite a lot. So I think it's thinning, but as it's thinning, it's also a little bit more coarse at the ends. That might sound a little bit of a contradiction in terms, but I think it's changing with my hormones. Um, and my hair naturally and used to be incredibly thick and coarse. So it needs a hell of a lot of moisture, my hair does. But I have discovered this a few weeks ago and I've been using it um, just this last week or so. So I've restocked up on this for the holiday, but I've gone for L'Oreal Elvives Hydra Hyaluro I can never say this word, Hyaluronic Moisture Boosting Shampoo and Moisture Locking Conditioner. They're really good. I'm very, very impressed with these. And for anybody that's got dry, coarse, thick, or age changing hair, I would highly recommend these. They smell lovely. They do what they say they're gonna do. They're definitely holding in a lot more moisture in my hair and I'm really liking these. So I've stocked up on two of each actually. So I've got four. So I've got two for home, a shampoo and conditioner that can stay here and a shampoo and conditioner for my holiday. And I do wash my hair every day on holiday because I go swimming every day, generally without fail, unless the weather was dreadful, God forbid, for some reason. Um, I will be swimming every day, so um, I will be washing my hair every day. So they're the normal regular size, not travel size, clearly. Um, so they're gonna come with me on holiday. But the other thing that I do on holiday, and I do this normally with Dove conditioner, so I need to get some, and this was a tip that someone gave me years and years ago. And it was a hairdresser who said, especially with hair like mine, that's very thick, that also needs to be protected in the sun because it makes it more coarse and because it's coloured blonde as well. Um, in between swimming, whether it's in the pool or in the sea, to actually smother your hair in conditioner. And then while you're outside, not only is your hair drying in between swimming, and if my hair dries naturally in between water, it's like massive. And I'll just look like a Lego piece, basically. You know those Lego characters and the hairs like this? That's what I look like. Or a bit like Wurzel Gummidge. Um, for you older viewers, you'll know who Wurzel Gummidge is. Um, and that actually not only controls that if I'm out and about, with wet hair or if I've been for a swim and then I want to go and sit somewhere and have lunch rather than sitting there with mad hair I sit there with my hair all kind of smoothed and silky but it actually is obviously conditioning and nourishing your hair throughout the day and then all I do is if I then go swimming again I go in the little shower that's on the beach or I go into the shower that's by the pool or my own shower quickly rinse off the conditioner before I get in the pool or the sea so I haven't got conditioner floating around everywhere which would be lovely for everybody else wouldn't it not um and then I go swimming and then I reapply it again and then what I do find is when I come to the night time for going out or I'm you know whatever we're doing washing my hair ready to do whatever we do in the evening when I then go through my normal shampoo and condition routine my hair feels great because it's basically had conditioner on it all day long I don't know and I couldn't tell you whether that's good or bad for your hair. I can't think that it would be bad being outside in the sun with loads of conditioner on your hair. I'd say it's probably pretty good because the heat's probably helping the product. But don't quote me on that. I don't know for sure. But it was a tip that a hairdresser gave me years ago. And I do do that when I'm on holiday. And I must say, while I am on holiday, generally my hair is pretty good and feels really nice and soft. So... I should be doing that again, but I do tend to use Dove conditioner for that. I don't know why, but I just always have. So I will get some of that to go with us. And I also picked up another conditioner, and I'm not sure whether to take this or um, leave it here and use it at home. I've never had this before. Herbal Essences, their Bio Renew range, 
sulfate-free, potent alloy and mango with real botanicals. Let me know if any of you have tried this. I've never seen this before on the shelves. And it apparently has colour protect and shine and has the Royal Botanical Gardens, Kew Gardens seal of approval. I don't know what Kew Gardens has got to do with hair condition, apart from the fact that it's got natural botanicals in, because that's, that's plants, isn't it? Um, but 90% natural origin. Um, and it just says our conditioner will leave your hair beautifully hydrated as intended by nature. And we care for the planet. And because it's in mango, I can honestly say it has a very, a very fruity, fresh scent. I think that's what attracted me, really. I've never seen this before and I've never tried it before. So I've got to wash my hair today. Actually, I might try that later on tonight and let you know what that's like. I'm quite looking forward to using that. If it's better than this, I might take that one on holiday. But I think the moisture locking conditioner will be better on holiday. But I'll give it a little review and let you know. And just finishing on the hair items, I've also picked up some Pantene Argan infused oil. And my hair needs a lot of this. It drinks it, takes it up like a sponge. I bought two, one for home because I nearly finished mine upstairs and one for holiday. And I use this every time I wash my hair. When it's towel dried, I put a lot, load of this through my hair before I dry it. And then in between washes, which is one or two days generally, um, when I'm styling in the morning, I tend to put a little bit on the palm of my hand and just glide it through as well, just if there's any fluffy bits or it's gone a bit fluffy overnight. So I was running out of that, bought one for home and one for holiday. And that is a little lifesaver, especially when you're drying your hair with a hairdryer in an apartment and it's so hot, you know, you get so hot, even if the air conditioning is on, you're sweating as you're drying your hair and the humidity really affects my hair. So as I'm drying my hair, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. But this is really good at controlling it and quite reasonably priced as well compared to some of the Moroccan oils and things like that. So those are the holiday essentials I got. And the only other thing I picked up was this, a prism unblocking sink and drain rod because someone has a daughter that's got incredibly long hair who when she washes it doesn't remove the excess hair out of the plug hole does anybody else have that to deal with it drives me round the bend and uh, I did notice that bath water was not going down as quickly as it should the other day I think it needs a bit of a so I found this <laughs> And I said to Grace, I bought you a present. Here you are. Go and use it. Um, she has not yet taken it out of the package, surprisingly. So we'll see how that goes. That looked a little good little contraption. Insert the brush end into the plug hole and continue to twist the handle until the blockage is removed. I won't film that for you, but I shall let you know how that works. Anyway, those are my holiday essentials. As I've said, I will link the video down below about how to pack for holiday. I don't think I will be taking as much on this particular holiday as my last holiday because I'm sure that the weather is going to be very, very, very nice indeed. So I can be pretty restrictive on clothing. Whereas when I went to Menorca back in June, although we ended up having a pretty good week, actually, the forecast was incredibly mixed and I just really did not know what to take. I had to literally take something for every season. And I'm sure most of you have experienced that one, especially if you holiday in this country. My God, you have to pack as if you've got four seasons in one or two weeks, don't you, sometimes? So hopefully I'll be able to pack really quite lightly. But that's it. Those are my holiday essentials after my little trip to the bull ring. I've just picked up these beautiful heathers from B&M. They are three for six pounds, two pound each, absolute bargain. They've got these colours. They've also got a green and a bright yellow, which was amazingly beautiful. I think they're going to look very nice in my little flower bed over here. This is my little memorial garden I've got going on, but I think they're going to go very nicely in there. For the autumn, everything's a bit parched at the moment and needs a lot of weeding. It does need some attention here, actually. 
but they're going to go in there. Little Myla's come to have a look. And they're going to be lovely and colourful going into the autumn. I am very pleased with those. Two pound each. Bargain. What do you think, Myla? You like them? So here we are having our moment on the bed. I've got one word for this week and one word only, and that is Scorchio. <sighs> wow, isn't it? If you live in the UK, you'll know what I'm talking about. Beautiful though, isn't it? We really can't complain. What a gorgeous week of weather we've had. And I think we're on for another few days of this to come as well. So make the most of it. If you love summer, this is it. This is our summer. So yeah, make the most of it. And obviously I'm going away as well in um, just over a week's time. So I'm very much looking forward to that. I've just said goodbye to Adam. He's just left me about half an hour ago to make his way back down to the south of the country. He's back down at Exeter University for one more year to do his master's degree, having come out with a first at graduation this year so there'll be another graduation for me to go to next year so he's all packed up and gone so that's a bit weird it always feels very strange when I've had him home for a, a good chunk of time a length of time I do find it quite difficult the first few days week or so that he's gone to readjust again um I don't have to go shopping quite as much my god that kid gets through some food I tell you the fridge is permanently bare and I'm permanently broke when he's home, but he's so worth it. Um, so he's gone. So I've got some sorting out to do this week, some tidying up. And also I always use Adam's room as my a bit of a dumping ground and packing area when I go on holiday. So I can this weekend probably get my suitcase out and into Adam's bedroom and start sorting through what I'm taking on holiday. I'm really, really looking forward to that. And... As I say, it's certainly be the last holiday I will have this year and who knows what is lined up for the next few months with mum. Again, not in this week's video. She's fine, but of course it's been so hot this week. I haven't really taken her out much um, because she's really struggling in the heat. Fortunately, her lounge in her house is very cool and she's got lots of fans around the house as well. So she's fine at home. So when I have taken her out this week, we've just literally got in the car real quick, gone to the supermarket or gone into a shop that's air conditioned, had a quick look around, got what we needed and brought her back. Um, and until she's, you know, until we're in a day or in a routine where she's feeling chatty and, you know, she's not overwhelmed by the heat or we're not in the middle of a thunderstorm or whatever. When the time is right, I will film her so you can see her. But she's she's doing really well. She's fine. Haven't had any updates on her referral to the memory team who are supposed to be coming out to assess her and to see me. Um, we have had the results of her blood test. Now, they were all completely normal, which is very good news from a physical point of view. But it does reaffirm that the memory issues are obviously isolated to her memory, to her brain. And I think they do the blood tests to eliminate that the memory problems could be something physical. I think sometimes if people have diabetes or if her platelets were low or there was some other condition that could cause her not to be able to focus or get a bit of confusion, they eliminate those kind of health concerns before they then start looking at the brain basically so good physically good the blood tests were all normal her blood pressure was spot on um so physically she's marvelous for her age but it has reaffirmed that the memory problems will be something else so i'm waiting to hear from them I don't know how long that process is i don't know what the waiting lists and times are so hopefully i'll get some action on that when i get back from holiday and i'll keep you posted I am taking her to an event tomorrow, so I might get a chance to film her tomorrow so she'll be in next week's video, but we'll see how that goes, but she's fine. So as I say, I've lost Adam, and um, that always makes the house feel very different for a little bit, but it's purely selfish of me because he is very excited 
about going back to university. He loves it, loves being in the south of the country. I think he'll probably end up living there and working there, I would imagine. Um, he is going into a new house this year, so that's exciting as well. And um, yeah, so I've spent the afternoon having come back from work packing and helping him and boy, there's a lot of stuff, but um, we've done it and he's on his way. So that's all good. Grace is fine, busy working, doing what she does. So busy household, but all things are good, fortunately. I have um, been to the dentist this week and most things are fine, but there is a little issue and I seem to have a polyp, well, a polyp has grown in my mouth, which is a little tumour. Um, so I've been referred to the hospital to get that sorted out and removed. I don't know how long that's going to take to come through. Um, it could be one of two hospitals. Um, there is obviously a dental hospital in Birmingham. So it could be there or it could be a hospital more local to me. But that referral has been made and... Strangely enough, I can feel it and I have actually felt it for a few weeks, but I thought I'd actually bitten my gum one night while I was asleep. And, you know, you can sometimes feel it's like a sore area or it feels a bit like an ulcer. And I did notice a couple of weeks ago that and I just thought, oh, I've bitten my gum in the night. And do you know what? I never once thought to look in my mouth. Is that just me? Does anybody regularly open their mouths really wide and have a look in the mirror and see what's going on? I don't, I don't think. Certainly don't do it regularly. I think I will do from now on. So I was at a routine dental checkup and uh, the dentist asked me if I knew that I had this. No, clearly. But I said, oh, actually, I can. I think I've got so used to feeling that there was an ulcer there, I've kind of forgotten about it. And that just goes to show, doesn't it, again, sometimes how busy we are and we get so involved in our day to day that we sometimes neglect ourselves. I thought, my goodness, how have I neglected this? So keep your fingers crossed for me that it is a benign little tumour, um, but it will get removed at some point. So there will be a little little surgery involved. If anybody, uh, any of you, if anybody knows what that's like, let me know. Um from what I understand, it's pretty relatively easy to do. I think they just numb your mouth, get rid of it, put a couple of little stitches in, then you're a bit battered and bruised for a few days, and then you go back, have your stitches out, and they get the results, and, and that's it. So I'm hoping it will be pretty straightforward. And again, I hope that it's now after my holiday. I would imagine it would be. I can't imagine it's going to come through this week. But um, we'll see how quickly that moves. So I'm not overly concerned. I'm um, positively concerned. Does that make sense? A bit curious as to what it is and why I've got it and how I've got it. But I guess we'll never know the answer to that bit. But uh, other than that, all things are good. And I have made a couple more purchases for my holiday that haven't come yet. So I'm hoping to show those to you in next week's video. And I hope you've enjoyed this week's video. Our little trip to the bull ring was a bit different for this week. So I hope you've enjoyed that. And I haven't yet decided what will happen while I'm on holiday in terms of an upload. So um, I might actually miss a week. It might be two, but I'm going to see if I can get something done to cover that time and I'll have to let you know if there isn't going to be a video because the times I travel are really weird and they're nighttime flights so um actually no going out is very very early morning like I need to get up at silly o'clock at three o'clock in the morning but when I come back I come back on a Sunday really out early hours of the morning again three four o'clock so, and because obviously my videos get uploaded on a Sunday, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to cover those two Sundays of travelling yet. But don't worry, if I'm not here for two weeks, I will definitely be back the week after. But if that is going to happen, I'll let you know. Otherwise, you'll get a little bit of something, I'm sure. There'll definitely be a video next Sunday anyway. So until then, stay safe, stay in the boat and keep doing all things good. And thank you so much for watching again this week. And if you have liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. So you will get notified of the videos that are up generally 
every Sunday. So look after yourselves. I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye.